In this video, we're going to be looking at chapter 5, sections 3 and 4, multiplication and division with decimals. Now, multiplication with decimals and division with decimals, uh, the multiplication is about the same. There's only one small little um, trick. Division, a little bit harder, but not much. Let's look at multiplication first. Now, here are the steps. Number one, multiply the two numbers as normal. Step two, count the total number of places to the right of the decimal points in both numbers. So you're going to add up the total. In this case, our first number right here, we've got three. Second number one, so our total number is going to be four. Place the decimal point in the product so that the number of places to the right is the same as that found in step two. So we just got to count. Let's go through one of these. So we have 3.571 times 8.4. Now for the time being, let's forget about the decimals. Let's do the multiplication. Now, 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 7, 28. Carry the 2. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 2, 22, carry the 2, 4 times 3 is 12, 13, 14. So, 14, 28, 4. Now let's multiply by the 8. 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times 7 is 56, carry the 5. 8 times 5 is 40. 5. 45, sorry, 5, 3 to 4, 8 times 3 is 24, plus 4, 28. Now let's add up our two rows. Now here's where step 2 comes in. Step three. Here's our four. So we're going to start back here. One, two, three, four. So right here is our decimal. So our answer is 29.9964. You give it a try. Press pause and multiply these two numbers together. Let's see how you did. 2.47 times 15.3. So our total number of decimal places, 1, 2, is 3. So our number should be 3. Let's actually do the multiplication. 3 times 7 is 21, carry the 2, 3 times 4 is 12, 13, 14, carry the 1, 6, 7, 5 times 7 is 35, carry the 3, 5 times 4 plus 3 is 23, carry the 2, 5 times 2 is 10, 11, 12, and 1 times 7 is 7, 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 2 is 2. Let's add these up. 1, 9, 7 and 7 is 14, 15, 16, 17, carry the 1, 6, 7, and 3. So now we've got three decimal places, so we start right here. 1, 2, 3. So our answer. 37.791. Now, let's throw a couple of quirks into this. What if we've got zeros? Well, the rule still applies. First, let's look at how many decimal places we have. One, 
two, three, four, five. So this one's going to have five decimal places. Let's do step one. Well, nine times six is 54. Here are the five. five. Nine times zero is zero, plus five is five. Then we got a nine times zero and a nine times zero. Next step, we're multiplying by zero. So we have a zero, a zero, a zero, and a zero. And a third step, once again, multiplying by zero. So it's a zero, a zero, a zero, and a zero. Let's add these up. Uh, quite easy. Four, five, zero, 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 zero. And we need five decimal places. So we start back here after the four. One, two, three, four, five. So our answer is zero point zero 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 five four. Press pause and try the second one. Let's see how you did. Well, eight times four is thirty-two. Two. Here are the three. Eight times zero is zero plus three is three. Zero times four is zero. Zero times four is zero. Two, three, zero, zero. But how many decimal places did we have? One, two, three. So we have three decimal places. One, two, three. So our answer is zero point zero three two. Your turn. Try this one. Find the product of 0 0.025 and 0 0.003. Press pause and give it a try. Let's see how you did. <clears throat> 3 times 5 is 15. 5 carry the 1. 3 times 2, 6, 7, 0, 0, 0, and 5, 7, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now, how many decimal places do we, do we need? One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's count our decimals. One, two, three, four, five, six. So our answer is zero point one, two, three, four, zero, seven, five. Now, let's look at multiplication by 10. Well, multiplying by 10, there's a little trick. When you multiply by 10, you move the decimal place however many zeros you have to the right. In this case, we have one zero, so we move the decimal place one place to the right. So this would be 42.83. Here, I've got two decimal places, so my decimal point moves two places to the right. Four, two, eight, point three. Here, I've got two decimal places. There's my decimal point, but I have no zeros. No numbers past the decimal point. Well, you just fill in with placeholder zeros. So this would be 2.600. Point at the end. Three decimal places need to be moved. One, two, three. This is 671.9. Now, look at this one. A little bit different. This 10 cubed. 
That's 10 times 10 times 10 or 1,000. So this is 1,000 times 1.28467. But I want you to pay attention. The number of zeros here is the same as our exponent. So we didn't actually have to multiply it out. We can just look at that exponent. And since the exponent's on a 10, we know that we're going to move our decimal place one, two, three places to the right. So this is 1284.67. So as you can see, multiplication by 10, 100, in fact, um, multiples of 10 is very easy. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about in terms of multiplication is estimating. Estimating gives people problems because they forget where they estimate to. You always estimate to the left most non-zero number. So, we want to estimate the product of 0 0.378 times 6.2. Now, to estimate, we're going to round to the 3. So this top number becomes 0 0.400. We have to put in extra zeros to keep the number of decimal places. And the bottom number rounds to the 6. So this becomes 6.0. So let's actually multiply these. Now, obviously, zero is zero. Six times zero is zero. Six times zero is zero. Six times four is 24. Here are the two. Six times zero is zero plus two is 24. Now, how many decimal places do we have? One, two, three, four. So we're going to count one, two, three, four places over. So our answer is 2.4000. We keep those zeros to keep the number of decimal places. You try this one. Find the product, so actually multiply it. 19.8 times 2.1. And then find the estimate. Now I'll let you round and do the estimate. Press pause and then see how you did. Well, let's see how you did. First, let's do the product. 1 times 8 is 8. 1 times 9 is 9. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 8, 16. Here is the 1. 2 times 9, 18, 19, carry the 1, 2, 3. So when we add these up, 8, 15, carry the 1, 11, carry the 1, 4. Now, we've got one, two decimal places. So our actual answer is 41.58. Let's estimate. Now, when we estimate, we're going to round to the 1 and to the 2. Well, the 19.8 rounds to 20.0, and the 2.1, excuse me, the 2.1 rounds to 2.0. That's going to be 0. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0, and 2 times 2 is 4. We've got two decimal places, one, two, so this rounds to 40.0, zero. zero. <laughs> now, let's look at division. To divide decimal numbers, it's a little bit tricky. First, 
we need to move the decimal point in the divisor to the right so the divisor is a whole number. The divisor is the number you're dividing by. Then we move the decimal point in the dividend, the one you're dividing into, the same number of places. Place the decimal point in the quotient directly above the new decimal point and then divide as normal. You may have to add some zeros if you don't have enough numbers in the dividend to move it the same number of places as the divisor. Now, don't worry so much about whether this makes sense in words. Let's go through one or two of these. So let's start with 6.8 divided into 76.84. Well, step one is move the decimal point in the divisor to the right so it's a whole number. So we need to move the decimal point over one place. Well, if we move the decimal point in the divisor one place, we've got to move the decimal point in the dividend one place. So here's our new decimal point. Let's actually divide this out. Now, you divide as normal. 68 will go into 76 one time. 1 times 68 is 68. Let's subtract. 76 minus 68 is 8. Next step, bring down the 8. Now, 68 will go into 88 also one time. 1 times 68 is 68. Let's subtract, and we get 20. Let's bring down the 4. 204. Now, 68 will go into 204 three times. 3 times 8. It's 24. Here are the two. 3 times 6 is 18, 19, 20. So we have a remainder of 0. So our answer is 11.3. You try this one. Press pause, and then we'll see how you did. Now, let's see how you did. We've got 6.5 divided into 1.04. Now, the first thing we need to do Make the 6.5 into 65 by moving the decimal place one place to the right. So the 1.04 becomes a 10.04. Here's our new decimal place. Now, 65 will not go into 10. So we'll put a zero. A little bit different than whole numbers. And we move on to 104. 65 will go into 104 one time. This is 65 from 104, which gives us 39. Now, I'm going to keep going because I don't want to have a remainder. We're dealing with decimals, so there's no remainders. We're not told to round, so we're going to keep going until we run out of remainders. So I add a zero, bring it down, and continue my process. 65 will go into 390 six times. The remainder is now zero, so my answer is 0 0.16. Now, sometimes we're told to round, and in this case we want to round to the nearest tenth. Now, if you're going to round to a number, you need to know what the number to the right of that number is. So we have to divide, if we're rounding to the tenth, we must divide to the next digit, which would be the hundredth. So let's do this division. We have 4.7 being divided into 91.6. Now, move the decimal place one place, 
That's will place one place. And we'll have to go some over here. So here's my new decimal point. Now, I need to go to the hundredths place. So I'm going to need two more zeros. And now divide is normal. 47 will go into 91 one time. 91 minus 47 is 44. Bring down the 6. 47 will go into 446 nine times. 9 times 47 is 423. Let's subtract. 6 minus 3 is 3. 4 minus 2 is 2. Remainder is 23. Bring down the first zero that we added because we've got to go to the hundredths place because we're rounding to the tenths. And let's divide again. Well, 47 will go into 230 four times. 4 times 47, 188. 230 minus 188 is 42. Bring down our last zero. And we're going to divide 47 into 420. That will go eight times. Eight times 47 is 376. Subtract. We've got a remainder of 44 again. Well, I don't have to keep going because I'm going to round to the tenth, which means I divide to the hundredths place. It doesn't matter what the next number or numbers are. So, <coughs> we've got 19.48. We're rounding to the four, so we look at the eight. The eight causes the four to round up, so our answer is 19.5. Your turn. I want you to press pause and try this one. Let's see how you did. We have 9.1 divided into 8.063, and we're going to uh, round this to the nearest hundred. So we need to go out to the thousandth place. Well, we're going to have to move our decimal point from one place to the right, so I have to go out to the right, and do my division symbol. Here's my new decimal point. Now this 6 is in the tenths place, the 3 is in the hundredths place, I need to round to the hundredths place. That means I've got to go all the way out to the thousandths place, so I add a zero. Now let's divide as normal. Well, 91 won't go into 80, place a zero, and now I'm going to divide 91 into 860, and it will go 8 times. 8 times 91 is 728. Let's subtract. 806 minus 728 is 78. Bring down the 3. Now, 91 will go into 783 also 8 times. 728 again. Subtract. 783 minus 728 is 55 bring down our final zero and divide. 91 will go into 550 six times. Six times 91 is 546. So I've got a remainder of four. I could keep going but I don't need to. I'm rounding to the hundredth which is the blue eight so I need to look at the 6. That means that the 8 point, excuse me, the 0 0.886 rounds to 0 0.89. And that is our answer. Now, there's two more things to look at. And the first one is the trick of not multiplying by 
powers of 10 or multiples of 10, but dividing by multiples of 10. Now, when we multiply by multiples of 10, we move the decimal place to the right. When you divide, you move the decimal place to the left, and you're gonna move it the same number of places as you have zeros. So this first one, I've got one zero, so my decimal point moves one place to the left, so the answer would be 72.3. I don't know where that came from. 72.3. Well, the second one, I've gotta move it two places to the left. The problem is, I've only got one number. I'll move it a second place, and I fill in with a zero. So there's my decimal point. Now we never have a decimal point without a number in front of it, so it's going to be a zero point zero two eight nine. And finally, our third one. We got one, two, three decimal. Sorry, three zeros. We need to move the decimal point one, two three places, fill in with a zero. There's our decimal point. So this is zero point. I always put a zero before your decimal point. Zero, three, one, two, five. So multiplying, dividing by powers of 10, very easy. Now, the last thing, estimating. The same rules that apply to addition, subtraction, and multiplication apply to division. When you estimate, you round to the leftmost non-zero digit and then divide. Let's estimate first. The 2.41 rounds to 2.00. The 13.18 rounds to 10. Point zero zero. Now I need to move my decimal point two places to the left, two places to the left, sorry, right, I don't know where I'm going to get my left to my right. Move the decimal place two places to the right. Now 200 will go into 100 no times. But 200 will go into 1,000 five times. Five times 200, 1,000. So our answer is five. Let's see how that stacks up to the real division. 2.41 and 13.18. Now, I lost my one. There's the one. Now I've got to move my decimal point one, two places to the left, uh, right. Move the decimal place two places to the right. Here's my decimal point. Now I'm going to round to the nearest tenth. So that means I've got to add two zeros past my decimal point. So let's see how this works. 241 won't go into 1, won't go into 13, won't go into 131. It will, however, go into 1,318. It will go into 1,318 five times. Five times 241 is 1,205. Let's subtract. 3, 1, 1. Pull down the zero. Let's divide again. 241 will go into 1,134 times. Four times 241 is 964. Let's subtract. That gives us 166. Let's pull down our final zero. And 241 will go into 1,660 six times. Six times 241 is 1,446. Let's subtract. That gives us 4, 1, 214. Now, 
I could keep going, but I don't need to. I'm rounding to the nearest tenth, so I've gone far enough. So this rounds to 5.5. Now, for further practice, Please use the instruct and practice sections in the Hawks Learning System. Work on your in your book homework and then work on the certify. If you have any questions, we'll address those next time we meet in class.